YouTube, welcome to the top 16. We are getting into it with the new pack release day. What came out was Earthbound, Testina, and Resonator. Also, Transaction Rollback is a big card, probably the most influential card for the new pack. Will we see it in the new tournament today? Hopefully, by watching as long as you can, that greatly supports me. Liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Begin. On your mark, get set, duel, mech knight, and snake eyes. <laughs> what is this nonsense? We have the cash tier of field spell grabbing our unicorn and ending our turn. Huh, that was something now, wasn't it? I guess we really didn't have a big play. If we had an ash or a ghost spell, we could have normal summoned it. We could have then went into a bear in the floor. So, wow, we happened to play around the Mech Knight columns. We did not put the Unicorn in the same column as the Birth, nor the Call of the Grave. Very well done here. On your mark, get set, dual grabbing an Assault Synchron from our deck. We are now special summoning it onto the field, which will trigger the Unicorn to look at the extra deck banishing a card face down. Goodbye to the form of the Synchron. As we now special summon our Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse to then make a Baron to Floor Omni Negate. Get ready to pop any card in the field as we then summon a Mech Knight Purple Nightfall. Purple Nightfall is going to attempt to search the deck for a Mech Knight as the effect veiler will then negate. You do not get to search. Have we used up a normal summon yet? We could see so by holding the information button here. We still have our normal summon. Pop in the call by the Great Finger, activating the Triple Tactics, thrusting a talent into our hand, which will trigger the birth to banish three cards in the graveyard face down, which we could negate with the Baron to four, which we chose to not do. Triple Tactics Talent will be taking control of the Unicorn, giving us perfect 8,000 damage. Just like that, Kashtira Snake Eyes loses to Snake Eye Mech Knight. That's what this is, right? Okay, very well done. Poplar on Summon, grabbing our original Sinful. We're on Summon number one. Five Summons Nibiru comes out. Oak summon for the graveyard. This is when you would see the field light up, and then you will know that they have Nibiru. Oak and the Poplar summon from the deck. Snake Eyes, Flame, Burge. And to try to play around Nibiru, because what happens here is if we activate Nibiru, the Flame Burge will trigger to then summon two level one fires from the grave, because you may be thinking here, he undercooked, right? He definitely undercooked. This is not a good ending field, but we knew that Nibiru was in the hand. By legally cheating, seeing the field light up on the fifth summon or more, that is how you know Nibiru is there. Now, you could cheat the cheat by not having Nibiru and something else that's activatable, you just make it look activatable on the fifth summon only. So you would just hold the card, maybe like a Thunder Dragon Dark. You just hide it, hide it, hide it, fifth summon, then just give them a big fat delay, have your field light up, they're gonna think it's Nibiru. All right. Let's go. On your mark, get set, duel, a Jet Synchron from our deck to our hand as we then discard it for our D Diablo Star. Diablo Star setting up into the back row, our original Sinful here. Mech Knight Purple, because two cards are in the same column, we could summon into that column. Sending the Get Ready Set to summon an Ash from the deck, I think Imperm will be popping off here. Negate, no search for Poplar for you. You have double Flame Burst in the hand. Those are bricks. That's not good. You do not want them in the hand. Now we have Hida. Hida can reborn a fire monster from the opposing graveyard, taking the Poplar, but the effect Veiler negates. We could tribute summon for Flame Burge. It's a double tribute, unfortunately, but we could do it. We have Flame Burge summoning an Oak. Oak reborn the Poplar. Poplar activate come to us. Divine Temple, which is really good for the mirror match. Purple Knight's gonna be searching her deck for the blue sky. Now, Le <laughs> you, you thought two cards were in the same column? Gotcha. On the resolution of the search for blue sky, which is only summonable if there's two or more cards in the same column, which there was one right there, we're gonna link Karibo, I guess in the same column of uh, the Imperm anyway. Uh, we outplayed the Mech Knight to then get outplayed by the Mech Knight. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, it would have been funnier if we had room. And you think, just use impermanence, right? We can't. And now there's a column here. So we almost outplayed Mech Knight, but because Snake Eye swarms the field too much, 
We couldn't outplay them. Damn. We tried. It would have been funny. Blue sky gets searching equal to the amount of cards that are in the same column here. We have red moon. Further linking this up into a Promethean Princess, Promethean Princess. First gonna use the Red Moon to destroy a card in the same column. Destroy a monster. Goodbye to the Link Rebo. Now Promethean Princess reborning the Ash. Ash activates, sending from the deck a Flame Burge to summon a Flame Burge. Very good. We have Eclipse summoning to the same column. Flame Burge pushing the opposing Flame Burge into the back row. Discard for Jet Synchron. Synchro Shokan into Borload Savage Dragon, which the Impermanence will be able to negate from equipping. Just like that, no negates for you. Very well done. And not sure how good our disruptions will be at the end of this turn, though. Linking this up into a Nightmare Phoenix. Phoenix on summon, discard a card, pop a back row card. To battle we go. Clean him up. And, uh, you know, that, that wasn't so good. We also did not have an activation for Flame Burge. Flame Burge summoned two level one fires. We only have one. Where's our other level one fire? We don't have another level one fire. The Jet Synchron is banished when it leaves the field. Had we kept Jet Synchron in the graveyard, then got the Flame Burge into the grave, Flame Burge could have reborn the Jet Synchron and then we could have made plays off of that. Yeah, Jet being banished screwed us. We have the original Sinful. Returning a Snake Eye back in the deck to then grab a level one fire from the deck, which will be our Ash. Activate the field spell to be able to set up something into the back row, which we chose to not do. We have Poplar grabbing the Subversion, which could push a card into the back row. Phoenix be gone. Ash sent itself plus Flame Burst to summon from the deck another Flame Burst, which will trigger the Flame Burst in the grave sent to the grave to reborn two level one fires. We now have Flame Burst pushing the board load into the back row after the Subversion also pushed a card into the back row into lethal damage. Imperm negate the Ash. Very nice. Now, what else can we do here? We could further link this up into a Link Rebo, then we're still going in. Now, the Purple Knight does not activate to special. The Link Rebo didn't activate to special. So we're continually playing around this Max C where we could have maxied early. All right, we're just ending just like that. All we have is Link Rebo and Call by the Grave. We're gonna draw a face, searching for Diablo Star to play around a Droll and Lockbird here. Ash on summon, searching for the Poplar. Poplar activate when added to the hand. Come forth and summon, search our deck further for the royal version of Divine Temple. Link this up into our own Link Rebo, triggering a card that we could finger. We are not fingering the Poplar. Discarding Maxi to special summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star setting up into the back row our original Sin. Let's further link this up into a Hita. Hita could steal our Ash from our own graveyard. Ash is now yours. As we link this up into a Selene Navida. Now we could finger the Diablo Star right here. Banish it. Now, the Selene does not target. So if we have another Diablo Star in the hand, this is a risk. This risk is that the Selene will still summon. But we know that there is no other spellcaster to summon from the hand or grave. And it just completely whiffs. We're gonna further link this into an Apollo USA. We could not have made a Promethean Princess there. Now with Original Sin, send the Poplar, summon the Oak. Oak activate, reborn the Ash. Ash activate. Sending the Flame Burst to summon from the deck, another Flame Burst to trigger the Flame Burst to summon two from the graveyard. Being boosted by the field spell, by the way. We only have 10,000 damage here. Purple Knight is going to be jumping off the field instead of being pushed into the back row. Ash is going to say no. And then we're going to scoop. So, yes, Maraud, we that's something I do want to investigate. If you properly toggled off on the fifth summon, but it's still lit up anyway. If that's the case, that's not cool. Totally not cool. We have Vanquish Soul has entered the fray. Draw and Lockbird stopping you from further adding cards from your deck to your hand. So the Borger normally drawing a card every single turn here. We did miss out on one draw. Now we're gonna draw a card. And for disruption, we have simply a Book of Moon, a non-target Book of Moon. So it's a little bit better than a Book of Moon. Noble Arms Museum. In for Noble is not good going second, but 
if we look at the official in-game data rankings, not on Duel Links meta, but on Macedo meta, we could see that in a way, Infernoble is the best deck ever if it summons Charles the Great with an 86.5% win rate if it gets summoned. That is officially in game. So if we see it, we, it becomes the best deck in the game, straight up. Objectively, that's what the in-game data says. So can we get there? Can we actually summon the Charles? DD Crow is going to be banishing the Joy Use. Okay. Joy Use is now gone. As we were uh, looking at the hand here. So we, we didn't want the DD Crow to be d discarded by the Neospatian. All right. That makes sense. Now we're going to get flipping. Get Book of Moon flipping onto the Diablo Star. Now, let's flip up our original Sinful, sending the Dolphin, summoning from the deck our Ricardetto. Ricardetto will lock us into warrior monsters only. Thus, no Promethean Princess. We can't summon it. We're making Angelica. Angelica, we need to target her with a card effect. We're going to grab a Museum on Summon, activate the Museums. Now we're going to target her with the Turpin. Now that she's being targeted, she has to be the direct chain link to the card that's targeting her to then send a card from the deck to the grave and then summon a Roland. Roland being a level five tuner. So what we need now is a level four non-tuner to make the big play. So by equipping a level four non-tuner onto Roland, we could use the field spell to special summon it, further locking us into warrior monsters only. That's another way to lock yourself into it. So you gotta be careful with that. Oh, gear on summon, sending a gear freed from the deck to the grave as we now make our Emperor Charles. Now, by summoning Emperor Charles, our win rate has skyrocketed up to an 84.7% win rate here. By equipping a card, we pop a card in the field as we now make Emperor Charles the Great going from an 84% win rate to now an 86.5% win rate on average when this card is summoned. With the Almas being sent to the graveyard, it's going to be grabbing the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed from the graveyard back to our hand. It just like that. Living up to its high win rate when summoned, Infernoble winning game one. Pot of P, banishing six, digging deep. They could be drawing into a call by the grave or into an ash. So I do think it's a good idea to chain your maxi in response to something that draws. Dig, dig, dig. We have what we want. We got that raisin. Raisin is here. Come to me. Thank your soul. Top tier if we open up with that raisin. And we got the Borger. Do we want a special summon under the Maxi? We definitely don't want to. We do have the effect of Book of Mooning a card in the field here. Reinforcement of the army, grabbing our Flint Lady, which requires us to just have a warrior on the field. Now, in response to the connector summoning the dolphin from the deck, we're gonna be maxiing as the crossout designate now negates the Maxi. And what's great about connector is it forces the opponent to use Ash. If they don't use Ash, the Dolphin will rip Ash out of the hand. Now, the problem here is we summoned in the same column as Raisin, and Raisin has this effect of destroying all other monsters in the same column by revealing a fire and a dark, which uh, we uh, kind of outplayed ourselves here. Yeah, wipe that up. And now Jiao Long is going to be summoning onto the field after a monster activating its effect. We now get to use the triple tactics talent. Looking at that hand, return back that Borger. Should we have chain Borgered? You know, the Borger would not have been able to draw anyway. Now Dust Devil is going to be Book of Moon flipping onto the field face down per Vanquish Soul with a different name that we control. Full field flippage. And by flipping down both monsters, the original Sinful Spoils was not activatable whatsoever. That was huge. We needed a face up to activate this. Linking up the Raisin into the Rock of the Vanquisher. Add back the Raisin back to our hand here as we now grab the Borger that was returned back to the deck. Using to destroy within the same column effect of Raisin. We're also using the Jalong to search our deck for any Vanquish Soul card. Anything we want. Come to us. A Caesar Valius. Goodbye to the Dolphin. Trigger the effect of Jalong. Come forth and summon Caesar Valius. Returning back the Raisin and come forth and summon. And just like that, we do not have lethal damage here. The Caesar Valius requires an Earth, Fire, and Dark to give it the ability to pop any card in the field. Now, we could burn for 1,500 damage on our turn, then burn for 1,500 damage on their turn. Thus, the Borger, 3,000 damage for game. 
No hand traps in sight. So full power, turn one in for Noble. Can we do it? Why is this such a high win rate when summoned? Well, the reason why is because they have an incredible amount of disruptions here. They have negate a spell or trap activation, negate a spell or trap card activation. That's right, two copies, two negates. We also have quick effect equip the Roland from the graveyard to pop any card in the field by equipping it onto a Charles or any other monster. We then have the Angelica, which will negate the effect of a spell, including a super polymerization. We then have the Baron de Floor on negate. We also have the Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed, which is going to be negate a monster effect. Only six disruptions. We actually have a seventh disruption through the Promethean Princess being in the graveyard ready on special summon to get popping. So seven disruptions. We have everything covered. Monster, Omni, Spell and Trap card, everything gets negated. Maxi in the draw face. <laughs> I'm gonna head out. Yep, uh, that's what happens. I, I guess the, the data's correct. You summon Emperor Charles, you win. That's how it works. Tier Lament Grief, which we're going to Maxi instead of Ashing. This will be summoning monster from the deck to then send it to the grave. A good way to trigger a Rhino Heart. Instead, we're gonna be triggering a Tier Lament Cash Tira. Tier Lament Cash Tira, when sent to the grave, we'll mill the top two cards of our deck. And then we're just ending our turn because Maxi. We got Max Seed. Max Seed is not fun. Snake Eyes Ash being sent to the graveyard to come forth and summon Diablo Star, the Black Witch. We do have Havnus, which we chose to not chain in response to the Diablo Star. When are we going to use our Havnus in response to a monster activating on the fields? When are we Havnus in? No Havnus. Okay. We have Divine Temple setting up a Flame Burge. Bro. We forgot to have this. <laughs> okay. All right. 8,000 damage due to the field spell. Now yeah, we had Ash, but anyway, let's hop into game number two. Rhino Heart on summon, sending a Havnis, activate a fusion summon. Ghost Bell negates the Havnis, mate. Damn. We have Banish non-target of a monster. We have Fuse with the opposing monster with the Rin Brum we sent to the graveyard. We have Permanently Negate a monster in the field plus Trigger Mill 5, which could likely trigger a fusion, which could also trigger the field spell to pop a card in the field. So it's like three to five disruptions based off of the scenario here. Let's go. You could dodge a Fairy Tail Snow. Y you could have, yes. Uh, you could chain the Fairy Tail Snow to the Anaconda. Uh, is it you can't special summon the turn you activate this? Activate this also, you cannot special summon. So you could chain special summon in response to the effect that's going to make it so you can't special summon anymore. Yeah, that's fine. Imperm, negate one disruption. We could still send Rinbrum. Diablo Star, discarding a card to equip into the back row our original sin. Ash on summon, activate, get negated by the Sullyak. That is one of our disruptions here. Negate. Send Kick Cow, which could turn into another disruption. Will it? It did. It's a fusion and trigger the field spell. Let's get to it. We have all of our disruptions, all five. So the Kaleido on Sun will spin a card in the field back. The field spell is going to pop a card in the field. And then what we have left is just the Rinbrum. But then we have Fairytale Snow. So we have another disruption. Fairytale Snow plus Rinbrum. Double disruption still. Okay, the Mirror Jade is negated. We're going to take control with the Triple Tactics Talent, taking control of the Kaleido, and then linking it up into a Dark. Dark Charmer could steal a Dark Monster, but it can't if we fuse with it by reborning our Fallen Albaz of the Rinbrum, discard a card, get Fusion Summoning into 
Lubellion. Lubellion on summon, discard a card, fusion summon, using the hand, the field graveyard or banish to make our Rukalos. And just like that, there you go. Damn. Tier limit's pretty good. We now have tier limit at the bottom. Triple impermanent snake eyes. Ash on a normal summoned poplar. So we know they, they're not normal summoning in Ash. And we're gonna further link this up into Link Kariba. We have no more disruption left. Poplar equipping itself into the back row. And now we have triple imperm we have to play through. Triple monster negate and all of the columns will also be negated. Rhino Heart. I and mean, we got triple imperm, so maybe we should be a bit crazier with it. Maybe activate it more often. We're gonna Revolution Synchron with the Rhino Heart making our Ancient Fairy Dragon here. Ancient Fairy Dragon activating a special summon of Fairy Tail Snow. Grief will then summon from the deck a Hobnist to send the Hobnist to activate Diffuse. Imperm will be ready for the Kitkalos. Come forth. But we're summoning a Kaleido Heart instead. Skipping Kitkal, going into Kaleido to spin the Link Karibo back in the deck. We're gonna Imperm negate. Okay, we have two more impermanences where that came from. We have Revolution Synchron, mill the top card of the deck. Milling Rhino to summon. Huh? Kaleido and Revolution into a Baron to floor, because why not? We now have Omni Negate for one of the impermanences, where, uh, yeah, well, that imperm that you're trying to pop will be the one that tries to negate you and successfully does so. There's no reason to negate it. Now we are making Anaconda just to get hit by the third impermanence, but if we imperm the Anaconda, the Fairy Tail Snow could dodge the impermanence. So what do you have to do here? Because I know we were like, oh, well, you know, the, the Fairy Tail Snow stops and it counters it. It doesn't exactly counter it if you imperm early. On the Summon of Anaconda, if you imperm right now, then what are you gonna do? You can't activate Anaconda Chain Fairy Tail Snow if it's negated, it's negated. I know, and the Baron of Floor is also negated. So you would have to imperm on summon and not wait for the activation. So there you go. Fairy Tail Snow, Chain Banish, right? Am I wrong here? What are we uh, then fused with the Baron to Floor? I guess if you would want to do that, I, I guess, yeah, you, you do lose the Anaconda and then you have to fuse with Baron to Floor. Would that be worth it? Baron to Floor still has its negate. Mirror Jade would be double disruption, but you have to discard the Ash. So I guess the question was, should we fuse with the Baron or not? And we said no. And also we are losing a bunch of cards by banishing for the Fairytale Snow. So we decided it's not worth it. Okay. Now we are Fairytale Snowing on the summon of the Poplar. Why didn't we activate? Because we want the Poplar on the field to not be destroyed by the Baron to Floor. Get flipping, flip it face down. Battle we go, we're not bigger than anything. <laughs> now back to you. I don't think Anaconda has anything left to copy from the deck potentially. We are going to be reborning the Rhino Heart during the standby phase, send a Hovnis, trigger the Hovnis, fusion summon into a Kit Kalos. Kid Cal activating, grabbing a Sharon. Sharon could special summon by discarding a monster. We're just going to normal summon it instead. Link Karibo being forced to reduce the Anaconda and we do not have lethal damage. Swing, swing, swing. Could we have lethal if we got Fairytale Snow in the graveyard to then do something like reborn it during the battle phase maybe? We have Time Thief Redoer, which could trigger the Sharon to fuse during the opponent's turn here. We're gonna be attaching a card off the top of the deck. Hold up. What effect are we activating? We're activating the detach effect, okay? And we're gonna Ash Negate. Because if you were to detach a spell, which we don't have a spell, but you could maybe a chain attach a spell in response to it activating to then draw a card after detaching a spell, that's why Ash will Negate. So no Detach Sharon, no Fuse. Called by the Grave onto the Poplar. Did we forget to activate Time Thief Redoer to take a card off the top of the deck though? We just didn't want to? Hmm, okay. Would Dweller have been better against Snake Eyes is what we're thinking. So how do we go? Big enough to take out that Verte Anaconda. Like what is going on? We, all we have is Poplar and Imperms. <laughs> that, that's it. Imperm, 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 Poplar, Poplar, po triple Poplar, triple Imperm. This is exactly what we have. It's just wild. 
Lethal damage from Snake Eyes badly bricking into triple imperm, triple poplar. And that's it. Good job, Tier Limit. Starting off with Alubur. I do believe it is correct to affect Valor, the Alubur here, because it combos up a Branded Loss or Branded Fusion. Now we have Thrust. We could Thrust into our back row, a Branded Banishment, which will require our Despia Alibur to be in the graveyard to even activate. So right now the Banishment is useless. Special Summoning the Unicorn. Now we're activating Maxi that does play around Gamma in a way. Now we get to look at your extra deck, banishing your Mirror Jade face down. Was that your only copy of Mirror Jade? We have one more. Stake your soul, revealing a Snake Eyes Ash to summon a Raisin from the deck all under Max C. What the hell is this? Snake Eyes, Vanquish Soul? <laughs> Still under Max C, summoning a Borger, Borger reveal to burn for 1500 damage. You have to be careful about the banishment. If Alibur gets into the grave, then it will be able to reborn and fuse with either side of the field. We keep on summoning. We're gonna subversion push the Alibur into the back row and that's exactly game. 65, 65. Why are you further summoning? Don't you just have game, right? Attack for game. You want them to draw into Nibiru. All right, and just like that, exact lethal thanks to Borger burn for 1500. Damn. All right, Lou Bellion gets searching up for the Serenir. Quem on summon, sending an Albion Shrouded from the deck to the grave. Fusion deployment is going to be met with a Maxi, which we have a finger for. Finger the Cockroach. Negate. Now, with the deployment, we are going to be summoning from the deck either a Cartesia or an Albaz. I do believe Cartesia would be the play, which would make use of the Albaz in our hand here. Very well done. Get cartesia -ing. And we are now going to be sending for the deck with the effect of the Albion Shrouded, a Retribution. So now all we need is a Branded Fusion in the Grave. With Branded Fusion in the Grave, we could add it back to the hand with the Retribution. So by using the Serenir for our Fusion Summon, Serenir will activate to get the Branded Fusion into the Grave, which we've been saving our Ash Blossom to be used on. There we go. That's essentially another way of adding Branded Fusion. And it plays around Droll and Lockbird since you're adding from the graveyard, not from the deck. But here we go. We got that negate. We got you, mate. Negate. Now, could we have just gone into a Mirror Jade with our Cartesia? We could have cartesia with the Albaz to then make a play, potentially, and just go right into the Mirror Jade and would have played around the Ash. Ashtier Unicorn is here, special summoning itself onto the field, searching for our Theosis. This really is Kashtira Vanquish Soul. Summoning from the deck with Stake Your Soul, Jiao Long revealing double fire. Wait, this is Kashtira Vanquish Soul and Snake Eye. Is this a 60 card deck? You have 50 cards after using how many? What the heck? Revealing two attributes to wipe out the column it is in, Theosising the Unicorn to summon from the deck, our Fenrir. Benvir activates, searching for our Rise Heart. Now, Theosis, I believe, locks you into Xyz only. Yes. So we can only Xyz summon. We are now using the effect of the Gangrenol to summon a Coritis since you summoned a monster through a monster effect. We're going to be triggering the Fenrir to banish you face down. Thus, you will not be triggering. And we will be looking at the extra deck banishing another card face down as your whole field gets reduced to zero attack. Okay. Rise Heart banishing from our deck a Unicorn as we now make a three material a Rise Heart. Rise Heart is here as we return back the Jiao Long to summon a Borger. Borger is going to be burning for 1500 damage here. We do not have lethal yet, except now we do. <laughs> what is this? Turn two lethal for Vanquish Soul. Two games in a row. 2 0. Oh. What the hell is that? Borger lethal, Borger 1500 burn every single time. Begin, and of course we're going second. So we're not gonna be seeing a turn one dino play. Ash is going to be negating that max C as we then have full combo normal summoned Ash. So let's see, if you wanna play Snake Eyes, this is the play you make.
This, if you were the Snake Eyes player, you would right here, then you would see the field light up. After seeing the field light up, that would be confirmation, legal cheating, that they have a Nibiru in the hand. And if they Nibiru right now, what happens? That will trigger the field spell, summon Flame Burst, Flame Burst will push the Mask Arena into the back row, and you're fine. That's it. And then you're okay. But Or they hold on to Nibiru, you then make an Apollo USA. You could do that. And then with the Apollo USA, you could use the Oak to send the Flame Burst and then further combo up. You could even just go into a Promethean Princess. What if you Promethean Princess, they then Nibiru? Same thing. They then have a Promethean in the graveyard, Flame Burst summons, Flame Burst pushes the Masquerade in the back row, but now they have a Promethean in the grave. So this is a really good anti-Nibiru play. Making the Link Karibo because, you know, it doesn't matter if we get Nibiru'd here. Now we are making our Apollo USA. Now you can't even hold on to it. And now we're going to further cook. This is your one card Ash combo. It didn't matter that we had Oak in the hand that did not add to the combo in any way whatsoever. We would have equipped it from the deck. Very well done. We have OV Raptor. We're actually going to try to Veiler an OV Raptor. Well, to be fair, if we chain Miscellaneous, they could then chain Impermanence to the Miscellaneous. Thus, it would be negated. We're going to Apollo say negate the max C, miscellaneous, make the Oviraptor unaffected, imperm, negate. The unaffected, soon to be unaffected Oviraptor is now negated. Damn. We still have the Flame Burge to summon the Mask Arena to then get linking off. But we don't have a card to discard for Unicorn now. So what is even a good play with the Mask Arena if we have already used up yeah we're not even summoning disruption that's not that good now the phoenix is making the apollo usa indestructible by battle so it is protected if you were to battle phase swing into it come forth you know this is where unicorn would be good we did have unicorn we just didn't have uh you know a card to discard for it ground xeno grabbing the xeno meteors plus destroying a monster to battle we go, Link Karibo is going to be reducing the Ovi Raptor to zero attack. Not that we really need to. It is affected, though, by the way. Get reducing. We're killing ourselves to trigger the Meteorus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damage step activate. So we needed an effect that negates the activation of the effect and not the effect of the effect. Does that make sense? Because it negates the activation, we could damage step negate, and then it does not summon. Very well done. Let's hop on another duel. Let's go. We have just a Veiler. Just a Veiler against dinosaurs. There's no way that's going to be enough. Digging deep. We could grab that Fossil Dig or a Ground Xeno here. We already have a Fossil Dig in our hand. Fossil Digging. Digging for our Miscellaneous Source. So we know that we cannot use Effect Veiler on the Oviraptor. Don't even try. We have negate anything, negate a monster plus negate a monster. And then we have ultimate conductor Tyrannum, which could flip the entire posing field face down. Is this a hard once per turn? Once per turn during the main phase, destroy, flip down, not hard once per turn. So we could flip the field down twice. Flip, flip, negate, 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 five disruptions, mate. Let's go. Let's not go, we're out, we gone. Now, Elf could summon a baby or petite, then the ultimate conductor could pop it. And if we didn't have the Pankratops in the hand, we could have then summoned a Pankratops in the deck, which would be another disruption with the ability to pop a card in the field. Poplar, come to us, Divine Temple. We do have Cyframe Gear Gamma. When do we want to Gamma, which will just be negated by the Ash? You can't call by the Gamma, but Ash will definitely be usable. Also, Ghost Spell. Maybe we Ghost Spell instead. Ghost Bell, negate. Max C. Ground Xeno gets searching for Meteors to pop that petite 
which will trigger the petite, which will trigger the meteors, which chain link blocks the ash from negating the petite, but it can't stop the finger. Right? Uh, the finger. We're waiting with the finger. No finger today. Petite from the deck, summoning Oviraptor, triggering the Promethean to pop the Oviraptor on summon. No miscellaneous to make it unaffected. We still get searching though. Promethean is now here. Very nice. Grabbing our miscellaneous source. We have not used up our normal summon yet. We're going to be discarding to make our monsters unaffected from effects this turn, but it's not going to work because miscellaneous gets fingered. So we were keeping that call by the grave for the misc. Very well done. And then Meteoris is now activating its effect, which I forgot what it does here. During your main phase, you can destroy a dino in your hand or field, then special summon a dino normal from your deck. So we wanted to pop the baby to then summon from the deck, but we are going to negate with the ash because we used Ghost Spell on the Gamma instead. Works out. Normal summoning the baby to link this off into a Cerberus. Cerberus on summon, discard a card, pop the Promethean. The battle we go. Did we already activate the field spell? We're just chilling on that? Okay. Small Kirin has a combo that adds the fire barrier statue. Well, uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, we were not planning for that reason, though. Grab the Ash, returning the Poplar back on the deck. Ash, activate, grab a Poplar, Poplar, activate, come forth and summon from the hand. When are we going to activate Super Palmarization? When is the moment? Hida could steal a Fire Monster from the opposing player's graveyard, which there is the Meteoris. Thank you very much. As we then further link this up into a Selene Navida, Selene could summon a Diablo Star from the graveyard or an Ash from the hand. I guess we're summoning Ash. Yep. Super Palmerization fusing the Selene and the Effect Veiler into Garura. Garura triggering the effect of the field spell. We were waiting on that field spell activation. We now have our Flame Burge. Flame Burge pushing the Garura into the back row, taking out the Cerberus. We now have Mascarina summonable during the next turn. In addition to that, let's get to it. Ground Xena has to destroy a card in your hand. So we don't have a card in the hand to destroy, thus it's not activatable. We didn't even bother with the Flame Burst summoning the Mascarine onto the field, not even during the end phase. To battle, we go, 3k to the face. Why did we fear summoning Mascarina, even within the end phase, why not? Now, we get Ground Xeno adding a Frostosaurus, okay? And uh, we're going to double evolution pill. Banish from the graveyard to come forth and summon Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. Triggering the Promethean Princess, triggering the Field Spell, which we could then chain the Ultimate Conductor to pop itself to flip the Flame Burst face down. Mascarina obviously could not be flipped face down here. It's going to be summoned in addition before we get non-target flipped face down. Get flipped, and we still have that finger ready for a potential miscellaneous, which there isn't any in the Grave 2 finger. It just like that, this is going to be more than enough for lethal. Sadly for Soyon, this will be the end of their dragon play. I should say dinosaurs. Kind of dragon. Dolka. Solda. Solda. What else? Lagia. Lethal damage. We are not going to maxi in response to the normal summon. We're just going to wait. We could, of course, maxi this if we're willing to play into a potential Gamma. A lot of Snake Eye players are not playing Gamma, so it's not that big of a worry. We also have the Impermanence. Do we Impermanegate the Ash, or do we just let them keep on Special Summoning? Well, they didn't want to keep on Special Summoning. They didn't add a Poplar. They added a follow-up for next turn instead. To battle we go, evenly match, banishing everything on the field except one card, Impermanence. Ecclesia going to be negated by the Impermanence, and yes, Transaction Rollback could copy evenly match, but only at the end of the battle phase and if they control more cards than you do. Which would be, uh, you know, if you have nothing, just at least one card. Wanted Seeker seeking out the Diablo Star. We have a ton of disruption here. Double Imperm and Daruma flip the whole field face down. We are going to negate. And we do have Link Karibo to dodge the negate. I don't think so, mate. No negate. Add Poplar, activate Poplar, summon the Poplar. 
Daruma could flip down the Poplar and send the Link Rebo to the grave if we wanted to. We're gonna Imperm negate the Poplar from searching. No good. Now, Original Sinful cannot be used if we Daruma cannon the whole field face down unless the Poplar is in the back row, which it will be. So Daruma's not gonna even be able to stop the Original Sinful. Poplar into the back row. Diablo Star setting up with the original Sinful. And let's get to it. Sending the back row Poplar to summon a Jet Synchron. We're going to be using Welcome Labyrinth into a Lady so we could chain to the Lady with the Daruma to not only flip the whole field face down, but to also set any trap we want from the deck into our back row to use during the next turn, which will be the big Welcome Labyrinth. Very nice. And yes, you can copy Eradicator Epidemic Virus with the rollback. We did test it. Even though the card text is uh, set up in a way where it's not supposed to really work. Triple Tactics Talent, draw two. I don't know how TCG is ruling it right now. Does anyone know uh, if a head judge has ruled against it or for it? Link Karibo chain link block in the lady from being able to chain directly to the trap to set a new trap from the deck. That is what you're supposed to do. As we then summon a lovely return a card back to our hand, trigger the lovely activate to non-target pop a card on the field or in the hand. We're also triggering the welcome labyrinth to set itself back onto the field. In perm, not only negating the lovely from popping, but also negating the ability to reset a trap from the graveyard. Grabbing a transaction rollback, which could copy in permanence from the opponent's graveyard. <laughs> Is Imperm no longer a good card to use because rollback could copy it? Set this up. Let's get to it. Big welcome Labyrinth chain. The It, it feels, it looks like Labyrinth is better than Snake Eyes in this match. I know it's a bit deceptive, but damn, it just looks way better. Return the clock. Clock will make the Imperm newly set activatable. Randomly popping the flame burst from the hand, clock being sent to the grave. Get ready for our response to two fire monsters being reborn from the grave. This imperm is activatable due to the clock. And then we have transaction rollback, copying the impermanence from the opponent's graveyard. Double impermanence. Your imperm and my imperm against both of your monsters. Welcome Labyrinth, welcoming onto the field in Ariana, which will then be searching our deck for a Labyrinth card here. This makes me want to play some Labyrinth. Damn. Double, negate, and don't forget on the resolution, we're going to Dogmatic a Punishment, pop your monster, sending Entis, triggering Entis to pop a card in the field, also triggering the Ariana. Ariana going for, I believe that was the draw and not the search. I th yeah, that was the draw. Original Sinful, searching our deck for a Curry Kara. Who has activated? Lady has activated. Lovely has activated. Ariana has activated. That's all three. All three of the Labyrinth girls have activated to come forth and summon our Curry Kara Divine Carnet. At 6,000 attack, lethal damage. How did Labyrinth lose this game? Ain't no way they had so much control. That's crazy. Ecclesia, come from our deck, Dogmatica Punishment. As we then set up the Labyrinth Labyrinth. Now, does Dogmatica lock you out of the extra deck for more than one turn? You Until the end of the next turn after this card's activated, you cannot summon from the extra deck. Okay. Now, with the Welcome Labyrinth, we could pop a card in the field non-targeting. With the Dogmatica Punishment, we could pop a card plus pop another card, but it's still kind of just one disruption. So we've got about two disruptions here. Can't chain Maxi to the Diablo Star activating the summon because she does not activate. Now we're going to welcome Labyrinth, non-target pop a card on the field. By using the lovely summon to pop the Diablo Star, that will trigger the lovely to pop another card on the field or in the gray, or I should say in the hand. The Forbidden Droplet is going to be negating the lovely. Negate. No pop from you, but uh, damn, we lost uh, an impermanence and a droplet just to negate that lovely. We do have Kurikara, which could steal the lovely. Link Kuriboing, it's up under Max C. Are we taking the Max C challenge? What are you doing? Oak, activate, reborn the Ash. What is this, three cards drawn so far? Three special summons, four special summons. 
Mobile X, you, you can't do this. You gotta stop. Ash negate the poplar from searching. Now we're gonna stop, definitely. Well, Kurikara, st oh no, we're not stopping. We have only just begun. Discarding for Jet Synchro to summon. Activating the Flame Burst to reborn two monsters from the graveyard. So many damn cards in the hand. We still don't have a furniture card to discard the rollback to then copy a trap in the grave. We have Dogmatica Punishment, pop in the Hita, sending the Entis, triggering the Hita and the Entis. Pop a card plus search our deck. Link Kribo, dodge the pop. We do have furniture. Did we just draw that furniture? Where'd that furniture come from? Did I? We just drew it. We have another one. <laughs> so now we could discard the rollback to then use rollback to copy Dogmatica Punishment, to copy Welcome Labyrinth. Let's do it. We're gonna be discarding for the clock. Torby is sending the rollback. We're gonna be able to use whatever trap we newly set onto the field, the big welcome, because the clock will be summoning itself onto the field to make the big welcome activatable. Activate, summon the Ariane, return back the clock, trigger the Ariane to draw a card. As the Stovey gets summoned onto the field, as the rollback then copies a trap in the grave, which I really wish we would have seen there. What the hell turn one was that? Not good. And do we still even leave the field? Ash negates the Nadir Servant. Okay. Now opening up a lovely is a brick. That's not good. We can only big welcome it from the hand. Evenly is gonna be banishing just the cross out designate as we take a brick out of our deck. We don't wanna draw that called by. We need to draw into a one card combo. And let's get to it. With the rollback, we have nothing to copy here. Okay. Can Entis pop our own rollback? I don't think so. Let me read the Entis. Entis, you could target one card in the field and destroy it. So you could punishment, pop your rollback, then rollback could copy the punishment again. Interesting. Set the clock pass. Uh-huh. Baylor into Dogmatica Punishment, sending Garura, Garura, activate, draw card. Triple Tactics Talent, we're going for the draw too. We're not taking control, we're not looking at that hand. We got our Poplar, but we're chilling. We already normal summoned the Veiler. Ariana is here, making sure to set the big welcome first before summoning. Now that you have an impermanence in your graveyard, our transaction rollback will be live. We could copy the impermanence. Now the rollback says you can only use one effect and only once that turn, so we can't copy and perm and then copy another card in our grave within that same turn. Negate the imperm. Now that's not going to allow the triple tactics talent to be activatable. We did not use Ash on the big welcome. We're instead maxiing. Quite interesting here. Come forth and summon, trigger the lovely, lovely pop card on the field or in the hand which we do have triple tactics talent activatable now, unless it randomly gets popped. So instead of randomly getting popped, how about we just negate the lovely, remove that chance from even happening. Ariana randomly drawing into an effect veiler, a really good draw here. Triple tactics talent going for that draw too. Into, we got our original sinful here, which could summon our Ash. We wanna be careful about it. Poplar equipping the Ash. Now, unfortunately for that randomly drawn effect Veiler, it's gonna be able to negate. But instead, we have transaction rollback at the cost of half of our life points, copying the impermanence to negate the Ash. Link Karibo is going to have the Ash dodge the impermanence, but a great part of Ash is it still being on the field to use its second effect. All right. Curry Kara Divine Incarnate is here. Effect Veiler to reduce its attack down to 1500. It also will not be able to reborn a monster from our graveyard during the end phase. Now Labyrinth looks spent, but they still have the rollback. Rollback could copy Big Welcome. It could copy the Evenly Match. Do we do that? Do we end the battle phase, roll back the Evenly Match to banish the entire field? No, we don't. Okay. Big welcome to summon lady to return lady back to the hand. Ku Clock being sent to the graveyard to then special summon the lady to make the welcome labyrinth activatable in the back row. Now regular welcome labyrinth 
can't summon the lovely from the grave. It can only summon from the deck, and Ash will negate. Also, Chainlink blocked the lady from setting a new trap from the deck that did so much the double benefit. Chainlink block and stop the summon. Let's go. Now, we have something. We have Big Welcome, which can quick effect spin any card on the field back to the hand whenever we want. Oak into Ash. Huh? Mobile X? What was that? <laughs> You gained 20 seconds at the start of the turn, so you didn't time out, right? Your connection actually failed. We did have a big welcome. That could have done something. That's not worthy of having us want to surrender, though. I, I think we actually did lose connection, so... That's fine. We have Labyrinth advancing into the top eight. Let's do it. The new pack is worth it. Let's go. Set two pass. We have Tears the Overroot, which can target a card the opponent controls and in the graveyard to send the card in the field to the grave. We then have Welcome Labyrinth, which could summon from the deck. Pot of D with that draw two. Looks like we have pure Cash Tira here. How well does that do against Labyrinth? The cards are going to be banished instead of being sent to the grave. Thus, the transaction rollback's not going to be that good. Using the Tears of the Overroot to counter the Theosis. Theosis needs the monster to still be on the field on resolution in order to summon a monster from the deck, which the Overroot is countering, and by putting higher onto the chain link, a monster that would trigger from a monster leaving the field through a trap effect, that may be the Lovely. Lovely could then pop a card from the hand, maybe. Let's find out. Or pop the Unicorn. Or, I mean, the Unicorn's already leaving. So it is the lovely, summon the lovely, then overroot resolve, trigger the lovely, imperm! But you can't because the overroot reset the pot of D onto the field. Goodbye, randomly taking out the small world. And now we're going to maxi on resolution because we fear that there is another cash Tira. Or, you know, we did have birth. Birth could have reborn. Lovely recycling from the graveyard, imperm negating the recycle effect of grabbing back the terrors of the overroots. Okay, we do have big welcome though, which is very good. Smashing them for 2900, the big welcome will not only summon from the deck, but it will trigger the lovely to pop any card in the field, non-targeting. We are waiting with the effect, using the preparation. Now that preparation has resolved, if we control a cash Tira and you activate a trap, we could look at your hand and banish a card. Got Birth, using the big welcome on the activation of the Birth. To come forth and summon from the deck a Stovey, triggering the lovely to pop the Birth. Pot of D, which you gave me back myself, banishing another 10 cards. We have 20 cards banished here. Drawing, whoa, we had triple small world in the hand. We just, we didn't have a small world bridge. Were all our bridges banished? <laughs> what the? Small worlding it up. We're going to start counting for Nibiru. Get ready. We can play around Nibiru by just hard summoning the Arise Heart. We're going to Ku Clock early. So whatever we set from the deck will be activatable right away. We're on Unicorn. Summon number one. You missed when I dueled on stream. Don't worry. That'll be coming back. I don't know when. Banishing Entis from the extra deck. Ku Clock come forth and reborn from the grave. Make it a big welcome activatable to summon from the deck. Lovely. Returning back the clock to trigger the lovely to pop a card on the field or in the hand. Activate. Activate Stovey also will be reborning itself onto the fields. And what is happening here? Goodbye, Unicorn. Now, the rollback is activatable to copy the hard once per turn. You can't activate two big welcomes in the same turn, but with rollback, we can. So let's see if that comes into play. So we're on summon number two. 2-2-2, two, two, two. Theosis summon number three. Then we are searching our deck, grabbing the Scareclaw Cash Tira. Summon number four, banishing from the deck a Theosis to banish three off the deck. And our fifth summon is a Rise Heart. We do have the quick effect to banish a card in the field face down. Nibiru at the end of the main phase, activating to wipe up the entire field. We're going to transaction rollback to protect our lovely labyrinth from being banished face, face down, which otherwise would delete it from the game. We would have no way to get it back. 
Copy the big welcome, summon for the deck, return back the lovely, and she will now be protected. We are sacrificing a royal Ariana. Nibiru is here. Going for a token. Now, there was a really old ruling. They did change this about maybe four years ago, maybe five years ago. The Ariana met the condition of being summoned, and even though it's no longer on the field, it would then activate. Stupid or good ruling change? What do you think? Come forth and summon Scareclaw Kashtira to then end our turn. We have a Preparations, which can reborn a Banished Monster or from the hand. We can't summon from the grave. There is a Banished Fenrir here. Okay, do we, can we Preparation reborn our Arise Heart? Yes, we can. Anything sent to the grave is now banished. Damn, we're not big enough to take out that Arise Heart. Goodbye to the Scareclaw Kashtira, which we're now giving materials to a Rise Heart. Anytime a card is banished, it's getting that materials to then up to three, be able to banish a card in the field face down. Primal being token at 4,600 attack. Preparations to summon a monster onto the field from the banished pile, which will be our Fenrir. Come forth. Lovely from the hand, deck, or grave. Returning back, Nibiru. Trigger the lovely to pop a card in the field. Preparation, look at the hand to banish that Nibiru. We have to take out the Arise Heart or it's gonna gain enough materials to banish a card in the field face down. Stovey come forth and summon a block and attack. Goodbye to the Arise, but the Fenrir will banish the lovely from the game. Gone forever. As we said, Nibiru is gone. Also goodbye to the lovely. 4,600 to the face for game. Death by Nibiru token. Damn. One and one. Chandelier getting the labyrinth set up into the graveyard, so I guess it isn't good because we discarded it. Maxi in response to the lady summoning itself onto the field here. Just gonna get that nice little easy draw one. We have the Ash to not only chain link block the lady, but to negate the big welcome. That's a hard counter. You straight up lose, you're done. But if you had a rollback in the graveyard to further copy the big welcome, that would be a good way to counter it or a Psalm Strike to negate the Ash. That's another way. When do we eradicate her? And uh, if we do it, it does nothing. We call Spell or Trap. They lose all of the spell and traps that are in their hand, which is none. Unicorn Imperm negate. You can't target my monster because I negate with our ritual monster. Sarvis, negate. And our unicorns are now gonna be successfully searching for our birth. We're now gonna be using the big welcome, which the Ash will be negating and chain link blocking the lady. So Sarvis and the Ash have both chain link blocked the lady from setting a new trap from the deck. Eradicator is now gonna take that birth and destroy it. As we then see the rest of their hand to see that there are no other spells to destroy. Unicorn on attack, looking at that extra deck. Goodbye to the Entis. Do we have more copies where that came from? That was our only Entis. MP2, Shang Re summon a Fenrir from the deck during the standby phase for a targeted face down banish of a face up card after monster effect activates. So Ariana activates on resolution, banish it face down. But we got a big welcome. But with no monster on the field, big welcome is not that good. We're gonna chain big welcome to spin back the Ariana, which we don't have a way to get her back onto the field. So, but chandelier is being triggering. That was the real benefit here, triggering the chandelier to then discard the Ariana to set up a welcome labyrinth. So now the big welcome will be way better. We still have to be careful about the Fenrir. We're still looking at the hand for spells for them to draw into, which they are not drawing. Come forth and summon the Unicorn. The Shang-Ri can't be destroyed by Lovely because it could detach a material instead. That is a problem. Unicorn searching for a Theosis. Theosis Sing onto the Unicorn is summoned from the deck, a Rise Heart. We have Scareclaw Kashtira summoning itself on the field. We are flooding this field. Rise Heart banish a Theosis. Theosis trigger, add back the limited to one birth. Shang-Ri activate to lock a zone of the field. And just like that, now we could one card overlay into a Rise Heart. We could do it over the Shang-Ri to then banish a card in the field face down. Activating the Welcome Labyrinth, chaining the Max C. We do not want to chain Big Welcome Labyrinth to this. Because we want Big Welcome to trigger the Lovely. 
then we big welcome. Chain the lady to the big welcome to set a new trap from the deck to be usable next turn. Daruma. Okay, I'm not sure if we're gonna survive till the next turn. Returning back the clock, not summoning a lovely. Lovely is banished face down randomly? Did that randomly get banished by the Rise Heart? Yes, it did. Our one of Lovely got randomly banished by Rise Heart, thus we couldn't summon Lovely to trigger her effect to pop a card in the field. Damn. Now the clock is activatable, uh, making the Daruma activatable so we can flip the field face down. So maybe this is just better than summoning Lovely. I think so. Chandelier, add back. Daruma ready to get flipping. When do we flip? Right now, flip the whole field face down. But uh, can we just like uh, flip back up? Yeah. Uh, hmm. That wasn't that good. Should we have waited for the Arise Heart Summon? At least. I, I think we were screwed either way, right? There, there's really. While the Daruma did not help us from losing, could it have? We summon a rise, you then have to flip, then we still birth the unicorn and have a Fenrir to attack for game, right? So I guess we still lose. Damn. Draw and Lockbird against Sunavalin. How good is that? We're gonna be link wanting this up into the dry ass. Dry ass on summon, add a card to then get drolled. Droll, negate. We're still gonna keep on playing. We got sewing into a Loki because the twin is stuck in our freaking hand. Some people play two because of this, but it's okay. We still summoned it because we didn't use up our normal summon. Now, Con Con does not add from the deck. It sets from the deck, so it's activatable under the Droll and Lockbird. We got Rick a sheet to sheet all over Infernoble by tributing the Shrena, which will turn into another disruption. So we got sheep, we got Shrena, we got Imperm, triple disruption plus we got the princess another monster negate we have about four disruptions let's go all right all right max seeing into the draw phase when do we whip out the sheet when do we get sheeted connector will summon a dolphin from the deck we have museum search in our deck for our noble arms our mace okay connector activate summon the dolphin mates Durendal equipped onto the Dance Peon to search our deck for an Olivier. Linking this up into I Sold. Do we sheet on it or do we imperm it? What do we do? On summon activation, search him for the Fire Flint Lady. We allow it to happen. Sending one equipped to summon a level one. We imperm, negate. We have three more disruptions. Three more. Well, now we just drew into an Ash. We have Ash also. Ash is another disruption. Discard to summon the Olivier. Activate the Ogier to equip onto the Isold. Now, by equipping the Ogier onto Isold, we could use the field spell to summon it onto from the back row. But instead, we're going to sheet on the Isold, tributing it through the effect of Con Con to take control of the Olivier. Damn. Stopping the Ogier summon, stopping the play with Olivier. That just completely stopping us completely, and uh, we did not get to trigger the strana yet but the princess would have been able to in response to another monster effect if you were to have another one and then that would turn into even more disruption from there sunavalin is nuts both of these decks are they're stacked for turn one their turn one is super stacked but their turn two is a lot weaker come to me diablo star black witch discard a wanted to summon that black witch activating the set so you cannot use your ash when do we ash this is when we could ash, but we're not ashing. We have Riccardetto, which this is Riccardetto. Returning a card back of the deck to randomly draw into our Turpin. Turpin is here into I Sold. Do not ash this effect. Ash when an equip card is sent from the deck to the grave. This is when you ash. Very well done. Negate. Now we have triple tactics talent to either look at the hand or draw two. We could look at the hand, we're turning a card back in the deck, that is. We're going for that draw two play. We have used up our normal summon, unfortunately. Heritage of the Chalice grabbing Oliver. 
Turpin is going to come forth and summon, uh, not summon, but equip onto the Isolde. We're going to send an equip card to summon Oliver to then further link this up into Promethean Princess. Charles the Great get equipped and mate. I guess we didn't have the Angelica ring play here. The Angelica ring can only equip if it already has an equip card. So if it didn't already have an equip card, then it does not work. So what we do here is we have spell and trap card negate plus roll and equip, pop a card in the field mate, and we have the Promethean Princess on special summon, pop a card plus the gear afraid negate a monster. Then we have the Baron to floor negate anything. I think we could have living fossiled and then with whatever's equipped with the living fossil, we could have equipped the angelic ring onto it, right? Let's go. It was ring or baron, but what about living fossil? Let's read that real quick. The living fossil, the angelic ring. So you can only equip this onto a monster that has an equip card. Does this have to equip onto itself? You can uh, equip one spell card from hand or graver to this card only, right? So we can't put living fossil onto it. This has to be equipped with something in order to grab the Angelic Ring. So Living Fossil was not going to make the play. So you have about five disruptions. Disruption number one, negate. We have Gearfried. We have Roland. We have Promethean Princess. We have Baron de Floor. We have the Magus also activating. What is that even doing? Uh, when it activates, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you could target. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, what's the other effect? If this card is sent to the graveyard, shuffle three of your other fire warrior monsters and or normal arms to then draw a card. So maybe draw into another hand trap, potentially. Very good. We got the maxi. Pedal, negate with the ash. No search for you. So we don't have mood on, which would search for con con, but we already have the con con, so it's not needed as much. Setting up with the Rick a sheet to sheet on the opponent. Snowdrop will get max seed. That is unfortunate. Drawing per special summon. So how much do we cook beyond that maxi draw one? Well, we can go into Strena, sure. Strena, recycle a card in the graveyard back to our hand. We'll talk about the disruptions here. Even though we got max seed and ashed, we still have a pretty damn good field. The princess can negate and tribute their monster through the Con Con. So negate a monster effect. Ricochet could take control of the monster by tributing a monster. The Strena could turn into a monster negate. So you have about triple disruption, even though we got Max Seed and Ashed. All right, all right. Can we play through the triple disruption here? Send to the graveyard to summon our Diablo Star Black Witch. Black Witch on summon activate to set up an original Sinful Spoil. O gear on summon, sending a card from the deck to the grave, which will be the gear freed. It's time to get cheated on. Tribute the Diablo Star to sheet on O gear. Okay, I mixed up O gear and Olivier. Okay, that that's why I was thinking I before E. What the heck? I, yeah, it's the O gear messed me up. Oliver and O gear. There you go. I'm not crazy. Durendal get searching. Durendal get equipping onto the O gear. We still have the Strena and Princess disruption. The original Sinful sending the field spell to summon from the deck, our Ricardetto, which can get negated by the princess, which didn't actually activate on summon, because I guess we didn't have anything to reborn, or I guess we didn't want to reborn the Magus. We're going to Princess Negate, the Fire Flint Lady Mate. And now we're going to be going into our final disruption, which we could Triple Tactics Talent take control of. Uh-oh. This is it. From the extra neck, the Sacred Tree, which according to the win rate says that it is giving us an 84% win rate the turn of uh, the game it summoned, but it just got taken control of to then linked into a ferocious flame swordsman. Uh-oh, the, the, the win rate's gonna go down from this. Further linking this up into I Sold. I sold is here grabbing a connector that we cannot summon this turn. We have already used up our normal summon, send four equip cards in the deck to the grave to summon a Turpin. We're going to be using the Magus to equip onto the Turpin to now make a Promethean Princess. 
Magus being sent to the graveyard is going to be returning three cards back in the deck to randomly draw one. Cross out designate. Reborn the fire mate. Immortal Phoenix Gear Freed could send an equip card to negate a monster effect. We have Petal in the graveyard, which wants to reborn during the end phase. Yes, it does. Are we going to negate it? I think we will. Turpin reborn because we have an equip card making the Amblo Whale. Whale, whale, whale. Do we negate the pedal? We have to send an equip card in order to negate, so we only have one negate, and we didn't want to waste it. Glamour is going to tribute the Gear Freed for the activation of the Glamour to search for two cards. Searching for Petal and Low Key. Both are level one. That's what we could search both of them. Petal search our deck for nothing as Imperm negates. Now, one Max C was not enough to keep them in check. Two Max Cs were not enough to keep them in check. A third Max C will surely keep Sunavalin in check. Max C, Max C, Max C. Turn one, two, and three. C for all three has actually kept Sunavalin in check. Isold is now here, the second copy of Isold, grabbing a connector that we cannot summon this turn, sending a single equip card to summon a Renaud. Renaud, grab back the Fire Phoenix Immortal Gear Freed to battle. We go 3,200 here. Lethal damage, and just like that, it is over after we back to back to back to our triple max C for turn one, two, and three. Infernoble wins it. And that is it for the top 16. We're advancing into the top eight with Infernoble, not only one, but two of them in the top eight, plus a transaction rollback labyrinth deck. So make sure you check out the next video, which will be posted on the next day. Thank you very much. Hajime.